Okay. Uh, hello and welcome to today's webinar. I'm uh, Sudhagar here from uh, SK Kampong Pudama, Klang, Slango. And I'm the moderator of today's webinar. Our webinar today is all about uh, AI object recognition library. This webinar is brought to you by all, by Malaysian STEM Teachers Association, MASTA, in collaboration with the STEM Cell Foundation from Adelaide, Australia. Uh, before we start, uh, let me explain on how you can communicate with us during the webinar. If you have any questions during the presentation or during the explanation, uh, you may uh, on the mic and ask the question directly or you just uh, drop down in the chat box. Uh, we will also have a Q&A section at the end of the seminar, end of the presentation and uh, prof or prof may answer all of your questions uh, now let's begin we are pleased to welcome our special guest prof miroslav kostexi who is well known as prof Miro, chief technical officer of a stem cell foundation in uh, focusing on ai social business startups uh, pro vice chancellor uh, Technology Transfer of Central University Institute, Cuba, of uh, Bamida in Cameroon. He is the inventor of Runlink code uh, of program. Uh, so without further, with a pleasure, uh, let me welcome Prof. Mayro. Good day. Welcome, Prof. Uh, we are so glad you could be here today to do to, uh, to Stay, uh, to share about AI object recognition library. Uh, now the floor is yours. Uh, okay, hello uh, everyone and welcome to uh, this week's uh, project workshop that we are doing. So um, I hope everyone enjoyed their storytelling app um, from last week and um, you can use the uh, storytelling app link, which is uh, in the document that's all working. So I hope you have um, also created lots of links and shared those. And um, we maybe you can share some more as well into the into the Telegram group and the WhatsApp group, and we can have a look at those. That would be really good. Um, today we uh, are going to the next workshop, which is the um, a5 object recognition and this uh, actually came about um, by a student of mine okay he was uh, in year six and he did the a1 uh, one line camera recognition uh, one one line camera code uh, to get the camera from his phone to the laptop and um, so I asked him to make a, a short video of it and he did a good job and he sent me a video and then he gave me a surprise. So he actually added to the one line uh, camera and did something which um, I didn't expect him to do. So what I will do is I will share that video with you because um, it is actually ended up being uh, this week's project. So let me just share the video with you. Hello, my name is Joshua Cartledge. I'm 12 years old in year seven at Mitcham Primary School. And I made the pink monitor project for the Royal Adelaide Show Technology Competition and won overall first prize. Here is a demo of the Runlink technology developed by Stem Cell Foundation with an IP camera. Now I have a phone with the IP camera app here. 
uh, but you can buy cheap, cheap $10 or so IP cameras available online. And this one line of code that I have here, this iframe here, is going to get the camera input from the phone and then broadcast it onto the Runlink web page. So if I run the code here, you can see that. You can see my desktop, computer, keyboard, and all of that just with a single line of code. Very nice. There are several uses for this. Door monitoring systems can cost up to hundreds of dollars to purchase and install, whereas can be done with Runlink and an IP camera cheaply and efficiently. You can make scouting rovers that can be sent to burning buildings or other places where it is unsafe for humans to go to search for any survivors and rescue them. Now, with just 35 lines of code, we can have AI object recognition in real time with a live video feed. This can be used to identify faces or threats such as animals to farmers, crops or livestock. Now I have some objects here for the thing to recognize. And so I'm going to run the code and it's going to load the model and the video. And once that's loaded, we can now put, for example, an orange in front of it. And it'll say it's an orange and how confident it is with that in percentage. So right now it's about 50% confident that's an orange. We also have a banana here and put a banana in front of it. That's around about 70% confident it's a banana. It works with most objects. For example, we've got a computer mouse. There we go. And that's only 35 lines of code. Pretty amazing. Thanks for watching. How old is he, Miro? Sorry, can you say that again? How old is he? Um, he is now 13, I think, but um, I think that um, he was, I think he was... Uh, 11, 11 or 12. 11, okay, 11, thanks. He was in uh, primary school when he did that. Uh, we have inventors club every Saturday. Year six, yeah. he was, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so he then went to Malaysia. I mean, the project went to Malaysia for competition last year, and he won first prize oh. for his project on water level measuring system for farmers. Very complex. Uh, he's now 14 years old. Uh, so this, 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 uh, Josh is one of those uh, examples uh, of how students in Malaysia will be able to also do the same thing. Okay, you can proceed, my lord. Okay, life. yeah, thank, thanks, Peng. That, that's right. Um, uh, now the teachers will actually be able to teach the students and how they can do the same thing because um, after Josh actually did that, I asked him, um, how he was able to do that, because I hadn't done that before um, directly on the computer. We had sent some images before to uh, Google and Google came back and uh, gave a recognition of what the object is. But he was doing it real time on the, on the um, run link directly on the computer. And he explains that the... Uh, TensorFlow model, so Google actually has a model which is called TensorFlow for AI object recognition, actually runs on the JavaScript much faster than um, other platforms, such as um, uh, Python, for example, is often used for AI, but uh, because the JavaScript can actually access the 3D processor on the computer. So, um, if you look closely at that video, you see that very quickly it comes back um, for the objects as well. Um, we um, since then have also uh, put that obviously into this document, but we have also done some extensions as well. So since then, um, the first extension was actually the voice. So we added uh, just three lines of code and we can add text to voice. So the object comes up with text, but uh, the text can be changed to voice. 
And then, uh, of course, then once we have text, then we can break up the text characters and also do spelling on there as well. So then this becomes very useful then for even for children that want to point their phone to an object and it can then even um, say it what it is in English and also do the spelling in English as well. Um, so, but the object recognition uh, is something that is used um, widely for all sorts of applications. And one of the applications was also uh, done by a group at um, a university in uh, Sydney here in Australia. And that, that group, what they did is they used the object recognition also to uh, check and compare um, people's eye retina to check whether they have diabetes as well, because the TensorFlow model can compare uh, different uh, inputs as well. And there are many, many pictures of those. So they were able to also put together a short video so um, let me just um, show that short video as well about that object recognition. Okay, um, I'll show the video what they did. This was the video of their, um, their project which they, which they did and they connected the run link to it as well so that it could actually show on the run link um, even with LEDs um, responding to the object recognition whether uh, someone had the diabetes. Hello, this is MN692. This is our hardware toolkit provided by our client, Labrotronics. This is our stem cell toolkit. Okay. This is a battery with module, stem cell board, LED lights, cables, and we need a PC as well. And we connect our two LED to with the Wi-Fi module like this. And we connect our board with the PC, but while connecting for the first time, we have to uh, press the yeah, black okay. button on the cell board and open the playing. program provided by the electronics to confirm our chip to connect it with the PC. So we are sending this program to the chip. Now remove the cable. We have to plug in the Wi-Fi module in the stem cell board very carefully. And and we have to power the stem cell board either with the battery or with the cable. We have to connect it with the mobile hotspot. No, I can't and reach I'm going to video. access the run link site, which is in the safe to our browsers. For this, we have to put the IP address with combining the Wi-Fi module number. Uh, here, our mobile number is 158. That's why we are putting 192.168.137.158 slash control.html. So here we get the run link in HTML and JavaScript we developed and assigning the port for the LED lights. And we are going to copy the image URL, which we are going to test and put it in our source code. And we are going to run the program and we are running it. Now we have to click in the image to get the result. So it has detected the color code and we are waiting. Now the red light is on. As you see, the means is infected. Okay, so what that showed is that the object recognition could actually show uh, whether it was green or red. Um, even on the hardware, so the IoT could actually de detect that as well. Okay. Um, Can I say a few words here? This um, project is actually done professionally in hospital. Uh, I mean, this technique of 
using uh, AI for looking at the eyes picture uh, in Flinders University in Adelaide here, the eye specialist doctor actually use AI to compare um, the, the different pictures of patients and, and, and see whether they have uh, uh, diabetic or not. So this is actually a real life application. So we have George here from Cameroon. He's 13 years old. And so he want to learn from the teachers. Um, okay, hello, George. Um, so uh, George could also do this project as well, because if he can open this on the laptop, so we're going to open the document and go through it um, so that we can get through that and we can also ask some questions. So let's, uh, let's share and open the document which we have, which is the document A5. Okay, so this is the A5 object recognition. And of course, we need to use the Runlink Online. So we have the um, Runlink Online. Okay. And so we're having some trouble with my share at the moment. So let me try that again. Okay, um, so we'll open the same run link online that we had before and um, just make sure that your uh, it actually does say in the IP address HTTPS on there. Okay, it needs to be HTTPS running.com. And um, if you're, uh, just take a note that also, of course, we can... Uh, also have this on the Firefox browser on the Android phone. If you do it on the Android phone, then this will actually allow you to select the front or the rear camera. Otherwise, other browsers such as Chrome, Safari, etc., will only have the front camera. So sometimes if you're pointing the camera and you want to point it at the object, it's uh, obviously useful to use the phone camera to do that. And the uh, Firefox will actually uh, allow the rear camera to make that selection. Okay, so uh, how do we implement that uh, um, object recognition? Well, we, we have a couple of examples. I've shown some examples. You can also have a look at um, the uh, object recognition examples here. This one here is the one also with the uh, spelling. So you can take a look at that link, um, which is in the document. And um, so uh, the applications for the AI object recognition, of course, we can use it for security, um, for facial recognition, and um, it can also be used for many other object recognition. For example, there's another project that our university students did to check whether there's actually uh, the haze over the city and how bad the pollution level is to actually get a reading of the pollution level just by the pictures uh, over the city using the object recognition model as well. This was done by Carnegie Mellon University here in, uh, in Adelaide. Okay, um, so the, the model that we're using, like we said before, um, we're using a, a couple of libraries. The first one is the mobile nets library. So this actually um, library has already some models built in, which has uh, classification in it already. And um, as it says here, it trades off between latency and size and accuracy. What that means is that um, you can get the speed faster, but it might not be as accurate. So uh, other models can also be formed using the TensorFlow. 
So TensorFlow doesn't require you to, un to know about machine learning, but you can simply uh, input um, things like images, videos, um, and even uh, elements from Canvas or the uh, web page so that it can actually um, recognize those and it will return an array, which is a prediction level to say that how close it looks to something which is uh, in the model, okay? So, um, so that means that there will be a number between zero and one, for example, 0 0.3 means 30%, or 0 0.7 means 70% uh, confidence level that this is um, a certain object which matches uh, in the model. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. Um, we're going to add some CSS just so that we can also create uh, some buttons on there as well. So, um, and we can lay that out. So, the, uh, we're going to change the background color. This is the body of the HTML. We're going to have a, a start button um, on there. The reason we have a start button is because on the uh, iPhone, if we use this on an iPhone, then um, an iPhone will not actually activate the text to voice unless it has a start button. So we include a start button so that it works on all of the platforms. Um, here we also have a, a H1, and the H1 actually means that when we do the H1, it has a font which will be uh, 40 pixels, and it will use this font to make it look better when we do the heading on there as well. Okay, so let's uh, add that in. We'll add in those things into the uh, CSS box. So we can copy that and we'll share the run link. Okay, it needs to go up here into the CSS section. And I'll just remind you that you can actually um, pull that down bigger as well. Um, there seems to be one curly brackets missing there at the end. I'm sure it would work, but there should be a curly bracket there at the end to match that H1 just here, code. Okay, um, so then going back to the project, Sorry, let me uh, activate that share. Okay. All right, actually, uh, there is some on the next page as well, just so that we can... put that... Okay, so um, just so that we can have some better fonts, we're also going to add this part here. Uh, P, P basically means that's the, the normal uh, font size, but we're going to just change the font so that it uh, looks better on the Arial font as well. So this is what the CSS actually does. It helps us to do the colors, the fonts, and center the, the graphics of our HTML display. Okay, um, good. So now let's go into the HTML. So the HTML, what, what it um, will do is we're going to um, have the start button, the start button at the top, which is this part here and the reason that we have this uh, shortcut listen is again for the iPhone so that it can listen to the start button. Uh, we have the um, style of the button here. So this makes the, the button actually um, look round and big. 
and we have a start ID so that um, when we press the button, then it will also change the text. There's a subroutine which will change the text on the button. Okay, so that, that part there is the start button. Um, we then um, have a header here, and what this does is it actually loads in, uh, well, first of all, it uh, puts in a title, the webcam object classification, and then we have um, three scripts which we actually load in to um, the JavaScript. So these are the libraries which come from the internet. So um, they come from uh, a website called Cloudfair, and uh, they then are able to um, load in the libraries for the, the TensorFlow that we described before. And then we have uh, the body, which is basically just the heading, the webcam uh, object classification. And uh, under that, then it will also put the, uh, the actual camera on there as well, which is linked to the, to the libraries there. Okay, so let's put in that section into the HTML. So we can copy that and that goes into the HTML section here. Okay, and if you want to, you can also uh, divide that out just so that you can see the three sections of your HTML. Okay, now comes for the JavaScript code section there as well. So if we go to the JavaScript code, um, sorry, did I share that section just now? Let me show you. Okay, so this is the HTML section. We paste it in. You might want to put in some breaks in there so we can see it correctly. Okay, then we have some JavaScript. And be careful um, if for the, with the JavaScript because it is probably more code than we've done before. So it goes across uh, a few sections here as well. Okay. So there's the uh, change text button. Um, the change text button here, which uh, basically was when we pressed the start code. And then uh, what, what we have here is the speech synthesis. So when we press the button, then it has the uh, initial message and is able then to speak that initial message. So we haven't seen this before, but JavaScript is able to do text-to-speech. And we will be using that um, for our own messages next week as well, and also creating our own buttons. So we look forward to that. But this week, we're introducing the speech synthesis um, with a message, and that initial message is um, also uh, this one here. So the initial message is this one, just initializing setup. So if we wanted to change, then we could change that text. Okay, so let's copy that section first carefully and we'll put that into the JavaScript. Okay. 
And then uh, this is the start of the classifier section here. So let's let's get that and have a look at what that is. Okay, so what we have here is we have a, a capture capture video and this function here, which is in the library, um, the ML5 library actually um, takes that video, which we've captured and uh, puts it into the model so that we um, then can return a value back from the classifier. So, um, We've turned um, a, a difficult object recognition uh, problem into uh, a simple function that we can then use basically as well. Okay, um, then the section here tells the model that the classifier model is actually ready and that it actually has the result. So when it has the result, then it can um, do this function. So you can take take the result, and then you can um, apply the result. So the result that we get back is basically this label here. Okay. So what we get out of the library, the result um, is in this variable. When we then put that into the speech synthesis, then it will actually speak that as well. Okay, um, and in the HTML, we want to actually display the confidence level. Okay, so this part here, the results actually gets displayed as a number. Um, and when the number is actually greater than 0.35 in this case, and of course we can adjust this value, and you might want to try it as well, of course. When it's greater than 0.35, then it does the speech synthesis. So the reason that we did this is because um, often we have lots of images, and of course, um, the model cannot always recognize the correct image. It might say it looks a bit like this, it looks a bit like that, and that would be, could be a, a lot uh, a small confidence level because if it looks a bit, that means that it's a low number. So if it's less than 0.35, then we don't actually do the speech, but um, we suggest, we put in here a limit value of 0.35 and said, okay, this is fairly confident. So let, let the model actually speak the, uh, the label message. So it would actually turn that uh, word, the text result, into a message which then can be put into the speech synthesis as well. Okay. All right. And we have set a value for, for the video here as uh, five seconds. The reason that we've given uh, a timeout value of five seconds is because we've given the uh, classifier at least five seconds to be able to um, classify the image. Otherwise, if we don't get a, give it enough time, then it will become a very low confidence level. Well, so we can set this higher. It would actually uh, mean that it would probably become more accurate, but of course it will take longer if we don't, if we set it to uh, longer than the five seconds. So the, these are the variables that can be changed, but let's add this into the function that we have. Okay, so you can copy this in now. Let's do that carefully. Okay, 
So again, when you copy and paste, it tends to actually put uh, everything up together and you might want to just spread it over just uh, under the brackets, just so that it uh, is easier to follow what is actually happening as well, just like that. Just so that we have the sections that we just described. Okay, so even though altogether it might be quite a bit of code, to understand it, then just take a look at the just, uh, just the uh, sections. Small sections and what it actually does. Okay, um, if you can please just mute yourself if you're not actually uh, on the other that would be better. Okay, um, so let's take a take a look then at uh, the results of that. So we'll just go back. And if we run run that model then, then you can see that it actually asks for permission to use the camera. Okay, so it needs to be able to use the camera. And you'll see the same thing on your phone. It will actually ask for permission for the camera on your phone. When you see the permission on the Firefox on the Android, you can also then select which um, video will actually be used. Um, so at the moment, because I'm using the Zoom, then um, my loading the model and video and actually even the object recognition will actually be uh, delayed because it's also processing some other things as well. Okay. So if we press the start. Initializing setup. You can say initializing setup and then loading the video and the model. And um, I would suggest that probably um, it won't work for me. Okay. So the reason, the reason for that is because my video camera is being used for the zoom. Okay. Basically. So it's cut off from the model. So even though it can, it can actually select the video camera, you can't actually use it because it's being used for zoom at the moment. Okay. Um, let me see if, see if it works. If I stop the video, let me try that again. Okay, I'll just rerun the code, allow the camera. Start. I'm not sure if the zoom actually still holds on to the video signal or not under this situation. So let's just check. Okay, all right, the zoom allows uh, other things. Mass. That's good. Okay, that's good. So we can initializing, initializing setup. setup and you can see straight away that um, my face looks like a mask to this model. All right. Um, so you can see the mask there straight away. Um, one of the things is as well that uh, in the JavaScript, uh, once it actually says the word, it will not keep repeating the word. So once it recognizes something, so possibly it might recognize, uh, for example, my phone. Okay, um, let's see if it recognizes my phone. Okay, all right. Lighter, light, it igniter, igniter. Hmm. Cellular telephone, cellular phone, 
cell phone. Okay. Cell. So mm -hmm. um, if I put that up again, okay, um, and it says phone again, then it won't say it's uh, the second time unless it's a different thing. Okay. So um, you can have fun uh, trying various objects on there. It usually recognises the phones, the mice, a, a cup, uh, the simple objects actually quite easily um, and more easily than the other things. Um, now I can't access my video until I stop the model. So let me do that. Okay, got my video back. All right. So be careful of that. If you're on the Zoom and you're trying it, then um, you might need to do what I just did and turn off and use it uh, actually on the laptop. Uh, like I said, though, you can actually uh, load that also onto your phone and it is more useful because you can point it onto the objects as well. And uh, we do have... Um, some short video examples of that, of what some students have done before as well. So I can uh, post those links uh, onto, onto the, this Zoom and then we can post um, those. I'll post Josh and I'll post that uh, iRetina. And also Josh also did an example using his phone as well. So I'll post those out. Uh, onto the Zoom, okay. Um, so um, as I'm doing that, maybe some people might have some questions or some comments at this stage. Uh, good morning, sir. My question is that can but can your system recognize, for example, um, how can I say, can you, can you recognize different things like a screwdriver, a car, and put? Yes, the common objects have been put into this model, but of course this model doesn't contain all objects, so some things it won't recognize as well. It contains a lot of, a lot of common objects, basically, this library. So the library was made uh, and used for other people to try as a TensorFlow library for others to use as a common library. So yeah, please please try those okay. things. We have tried screwdriver and, and pen and other things like that as well. Myro, uh, actually, how how this running uh, recognize uh, an object? How how it recognize object? Which which part uh, which part in HTML in, is it in HTML or what? Okay, so the the objects the object is actually recognizes using the code, and the code is then from the library. So what the what the code in the library does is it takes oh. the the camera, okay, which we went through before. It takes the camera, and then um, that's why it takes quite a while to load the library into the memory because then the memory on your device, either your phone or on your laptop, then contains the TensorFlow model. And then the code can very quickly using the TensorFlow can compare what is the object compared to all of the um, objects which are already stored in the model. And because it's on the local machine and you can use the 3D processor, then it can be quite fast. And it's quite surprising, actually. Um, the phone can actually be, be quite quite fast. And we have found that it depends also on, on the camera. And obviously, it depends on things like the background. So, for example, the, the short video I'll show you of Josh, um, he actually does it on his couch. And I think he actually put a grey towel at the back because if you just have the objects and then you have a blank surface at the back, then obviously the model can recognise the objects much easier than if you have lots of other things in the background. Okay, so um, all of those factors will um, 
determine how easy it is to, to recognize the things. So the script of the object recognition is on is based on the library. The um, yes, the the code for the actual object recognition in the TensorFlow is actually in the library, mm -hmm. and those that library is actually also public, so you can take a look at the library. Oh. The library is the ML five, so in our document uh, ML five, and you can actually take a look at that. And that is public as well, so you can take okay. a look. And in fact, you can obviously build your own models and then uh, also um, import your own models as well. And that is how the uh, iRetina uh, students did that as well. They create their own TensorFlow models and then they can import them into the RunLink. And then the RunLink also doesn't need to have a lot of code in it as well. It just uses um, the model and loads it into the memory for the machines to process. Myro, can, can we create our own library? Uh, let's say uh, I want to use uh, uh, my student's fingerprint as, yes, a, as a recognition. Yes, you, can, you can create your own, own libraries definitely with uh, TensorFlow and then you can uh, use the same method to load in the libraries into the run link. And then the run link, just like I showed you at the video before, um, can also connect not just the the text to the voice, um, but also can connect also using um, the same method in the JavaScript, go out and then activate LEDs or it can activate uh, alarms or it can activate, uh, for example, um, even uh, an alert or an email. In fact, um, just recently, our students uh, have been uh, putting, using the object recognition to recognize um, a fire or smoke of, on a camera on a drone. So for example, it doesn't have to be the camera on your device, it can be other devices. So if the drone camera actually then sees some smoke, then it can send an alert uh, immediately, even on an email to say uh, where the drone is, and then to say that there's this smoke, take a picture, send an email, so it can activate other things on the IoT as, as a bigger project as well. And other students also at our Royal Show have used it to do things like sort out rubbish. Okay, so they use a, um, a, robotic, a robotic hand to actually put, mm -hmm. put the rubbish in the, the right section as well, which is... Uh, important because um, uh, if we want to recycle, then uh, we want to be able to to recognise the rubbish as well. So many many uses. Any other questions at this stage? Uh, Besides you using the the same method for for object recognition, is there any type of I uh, mean, uh, type of uh, recognition category. I mean, maybe they can be taken either by plastic, metal, uh, peppers. Is, is it possible? Yes, yes. Uh, the the TensorFlow can can have um, can be trained to have uh, different uh, pictures. Obviously, you load lots of uh, pictures or videos, and then it can compare the pictures and videos. The more you have, the more accurate the model. So you have lots of pictures of metal, you have lots of pictures of papers mm -hmm. and things like that, then um, it can actually see what is the, the closest that it can recognise. I mean, it also can recognise a shape of uh, humans, right? <laughs> yes. yes, of course, yeah. Not only the shape of the human, it can recognise the shape of the eyes, it can recognise the face. So the, the same uh, type of technique is used to recognise mm. uh, faces. As oh, well, the section, yeah. So the facial recognition actually works on this uh, model as well. Okay. But uh, Jagu, so highly, yes. you have yes. to be careful how you apply it, though. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because some countries, at least fifty countries now, okay, use object AI object recognition to give the citizens social credit. In other words, the machine will decide if your social credit between zero and 100% is less than 50%, let's say, 
you will not be able to fly from KL to Singapore. <laughs> really? So that's how machine decides now whether you can even take a bus to Penang. Mm. And it will have a lot more data than just your face. It will gather all your DNA, where you live, who you teach, whether you are a good teacher or not. Mm. And it will then give you a social credit. Even if the, the, the airline have tickets, mm. you have money in your credit card, it wouldn't sell you the ticket. Mm. Already, this is a few years ago, this is real in some countries now. So AI mm. is so powerful, it used to control people, manage people. Of course, the, the good thing is what Miro has explained. But socially, uh, depends on how you use the technology to uh, manage uh, people, uh, some countries, you know, uh, government, they, they want to manage people to the point where they, they maintain full control. You see, sorry, we have a question from young George here from, uh, he's very creative. He likes to ask a lot of questions. George is only 13 years old, but he completed, uh, supposedly from one, but he completed from three. He's going to form four now. So he's a very fast learner. Yeah, George, please. Uh, Professor Miro, can this... Internet not so good from Cameroon. He's from Cameroon. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He got stuck there. I, I suppose the uh, ones... Um, useful information about Cameroon is uh, the, uh, maybe everybody knows already, the uh, oil palm, is it? The plant, the oil palm. The first seedling in Malaysia actually comes from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. <laughs> from the history of mm -hmm. relationship between uh, Malaysia and uh, Cameroon is, is from oil palm. Sure, but, but it is not an original plant in Malaysia. <laughs> Imported long time ago. Imported yes. into, but look at, look at how many people it employ as a result. One plant from Cameroon. So this is where George come from. So George is actually uh, borrowing his uh, uh, laptop at the university, Polytechnic University, uh, from a lecturer there, and uh, he's uh, well liked by. Uh, professors because of his uh, interest in technology, you know. So George has attended many webinars uh, at door in Malaysia. Uh, we only know George for two weeks. And then um, uh, this uh, uh, woman in technology in Cameron, keynote by keynote speaker was Google, Google uh, manager of uh, America. So this exposure to the young students is going to create a lot of international relationship. So we hope that you'll be able to introduce George, many other young students like him in Malaysia. For those teachers listening in, if you have young students who are very, very keen in technology, uh, we are forming a group in Ardo. A-R-T-D-O is, I think you, you guys know, huh? Asia Regional Training. Uh, ART, Asia Regional Training. Art. Art Do. Yeah, DO is Development Organization. It's about 47 years old, 40 countries now. They just entered into America. And so we are helping them to form a technology committee. Uh, and, and then um, uh, forming also a young students group within the ATO community so that these students can share their experiences on STEM, IoT, and AI. Maybe uh, Joshua can be our teacher after this. We are hoping <laughs> that he's uh, going to help to uh, inspire a lot of young students. Uh. I think he just dropped out because internet is a problem there. They have blackout also, lots of blackout because uh, of unstable electricity there. And also that country has a lot of civil upheaval at the moment. And so very lucky to be able to help him to at least reach out to outside. Very restricted. Um, 
in camera. So someone, someone just posted a question as to the number. So they said that um, on the video there's the word orange and then there's the number. What is that number? Okay, so that number is actually a number between zero and one um, as to what is the confidence level of the model. Okay, so the TensorFlow models actually produce um, also a confidence level as to how confident the model is that it is like um, something that has been um, already put into the model, such as an orange. So if the uh, model comes back with a number which is 0.3, it says it's 30% confidence it's an orange. If it comes back with 80%, it says it's 80% confident and that would be 0.8 okay um that it is an orange so if we then in the javascript actually check that number and it's above 0.35 then it will actually activate the voice all right so if you if you use this object recognition and it comes up with uh, a word and it's 0 0.2 0 0.3 it will not actually say it until it's over 0.35 but you can change that number in your code. You can try that as well. Okay, good question. If Mayro, if you want to adjust the uh, object recognition, in the, do we have to change in in all the uh, programming or just uh, inside the HTML box? If you want to change. Um, what the what object. do you want to change? The object. Change the object. Yeah. From okay. the library. From the library. The object library. Okay. You would have to then go into the um go into the, the, cloud, the cloudfair.com. That's right. You change it. Change the script source in the HTML. There's actually a script source there in the HTML, yeah. which you would uh, simply change that, and then it would load that library in there. Oh, just copy it from the Cloudflare and put it there. That's right. Yeah. So uh, there's when when you actually produce then the the library in the Cloudflare, then you can simply just load it in from that. Okay. Okay, and uh, you can use the same technique also on Runlink to load other libraries, even for other um, applications as well. Okay, so this, this one here is for the TensorFlow object recognition, mm -hmm. but obviously we can also include other libraries that we can use the functions in those libraries as well on the Runlink. Okay. Can, can, can we, uh, 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 I mean, uh, recognize an object for the shape. I mean, uh, just to teach our kindergarten school students, this is a round shape, this is a square shape. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yes, of course. Yeah, definitely you can do that as well. Um, yeah, and in the Cloudflare, I think they have various libraries there as well. And I think oh, okay. uh, some of them might be, I think also including colors and shapes. Right. in there as well so you can take a look at those various libraries okay. yeah the one that we have loaded is a general one so you know you can recognize for example animals and so one of the um, big applications was also in uh, Bhutan where they have animals go uh, onto the the crops there as well and um, because uh, of their religion they they don't want to um, shoot the animals or, or damage the animals they just want to scare them away okay they don't want to kill the animals at all so um basically they need to recognize what they are so that they can scare them the right way so for example if it's an elephant then you actually do make a mouse noise because um i thought it was just a joke but it's true elephants are actually scared of mice that they'll run up their <laughs> nose um, yeah. So that actually scares them. <laughs> but if, if you have a wild boar, a wild pig, then you, you have a tiger, a big tiger roar, and they, then they'll run on that as well. So if you, they can recognize the animals and they can scare them away effectively. So a lot of wildlife in uh, Bhutan is a big problem. They attack the farms 
they attack people also. And so, because they are near to Himalayas, right? Mm -hmm. And so very wild there. And so one of the biggest problem is to develop a system to scale off this wild animal because they attack the crops. You know, they what, destroy what, a lot of crops. What, uh... Well, what other type of recognition that the runling can do uh, beside the maybe the the shape, the color, uh, maybe the voice recognition? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe the frequency of something sound. Yes, it, it uh, the voice recognition. Uh, also, we are going to do a project A seven uh, for the okay. voice recognition, so that that one okay, okay. is just not just to recognize the voice, but to change the voice into text. And obviously, if we can change it to text, then we can also use it inside our code to do other things and activate other things. You know, um, I, I saw the movie from Korea. There is a house <laughs> to open the door. They need to put their fingerprint uh, at the at the header and maybe from the, and also include with the sound to open the door. <laughs> some some also yeah. can look at your eyes. Yes. yes. Yeah. From the eyes because it's very unique from your fingerprint and the eyes, only you can enter, right? Because yeah. nobody has the same fingerprint. Yeah. And so it's very secure that way. And so from the uh, uh, changing text to voice can help, I suppose, uh, people who have uh, visual impair, you know, vision, vision impair, cannot see properly. So the object recognition will scan the words and then turn it into sound in the voice so that the uh, the, the, the half blind or, or whatever people can 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 understand what are the texts. Uh. So the application is limitless. Uh. It's a matter of refining the uh, the uh, what do you call the uh, the project in order to recognize different things. Uh, and obviously things like driverless cars though, which have lots of cameras uh, need to use object recognition all the time you know they need to recognize the traffic lights and they need to recognize the colors where they are the people um, where where they're moving and i even heard that they often recognize whether the car which is near them actually has children or babies on board because um the um, AI in the car will actually treat those as being a higher value than um, other cars in case of accidents. So it's very interesting um, how they program all, all of those cameras as well. Yeah, maybe we can check uh, from, the, from the library to test that. Does anyone else have any questions on that? Um, you should actually, obviously, everyone should try it. Mm -hmm. And I've posted a video link of uh, Josh's phone object recognition <laughs> with spelling as well. Yeah. And I, I think it would be useful uh, for, for teachers who are attending this uh, workshop today if you can um, go a step further by inviting some of these, um, your students, um, subject to obviously availability of mirror to do, to do uh, maybe even the drone uh, uh, demonstration again, you know? And so that uh, you can keep the, uh, keep the fire going, uh, keep the interest going. And, and then uh, some of these kids, uh, you can identify maybe as George, like just now, and then they can form the network. And so on the 20th of August, Miro, you want to explain a bit more about this KLESF? Uh, is that a webinar? Okay, that's uh, actually, it's the 28th of August, the KLESF. Okay, um, so Saturday, the 28th of August. Um, we have uh, a special webinar with them where we're showing the, the run link uh, and the drone and the, the STEM there as well. So we would like um, teachers and the students to also be involved in that as well. And it would be really good because we are talking about STEM that maybe um, we can do a little bit of a showcase that some of you 
um, that have done some of the uh, the projects on here mm. can also show what you have done as well. And even better if you can show what your students have done. Like uh, we have in the past had teachers which have shown it to students and then the students have been able to then um, activate many other students as well, such as obviously Pavana in the past who has done these workshops. Um, so we'd like, like maybe some of those students to show their things and we'll be inviting uh, people also like George as well, who's, who's done these things as well to say a few words. So that would be good to prepare. For that and one. I'm sure this um, Bhutanese uh, who, who wrote the paper about Run Link will be, uh, we'll invite him to also say a few words. So it's, it's, these are all educators uh, from different levels. And the more we interact, I think the better support you get. KL, ESF, everybody is familiar. I think it's uh, yes. Kuala Lumpur Engineering, Engineering Science, Science Fair. Fair. Yeah. It's a yearly so, event. Yeah, they have been around for a long time, isn't it? Mm. So this is like an engineering society, uh, a group of engineers or whatever. And, and so I think this is the first time we engage them. Uh, hopefully that they can give uh, PGSM some support. You know, yes. since... We know them. We know them. They are our, our partners. What What do they give to you as as a partner? Normally, they give us a booth to 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 showcase. Okay. So uh, I before, think they before the they, pandemic. Before the pandemic. Sure, sure. Yeah. But uh, but on Zoom also they can give something. What? Right. I'm sure they have a lot of things. These are engineers of all discipline: uh, civil, mechanical, electrical, uh, biotechnology. And, and so all these uh, um, businesses, many of them, so they can afford, uh, if you identify an event or some help for maybe some schools or something, they could uh, help to uh, promote it or, or give support. Yeah. Um, just like um, the example of, uh, she's not here, this uh, Ng Yi Jun from Convent Butterworth, right? I think most teachers here heard the story already that uh, the PIBG fundraised about 30,000 ringgit to give to about 90 students' families who are affected by the COVID-19 uh, financially. Uh, so they, they buy food. Uh, it's a food basket thing. So things like that, KLESF could also help. Yeah. Dr. Tepeng, maybe can, you can ask uh, KL. KLESF to, to, to give us maybe 100 run link kit and then... Why not? It's worth a try. But, yeah. but for me to, to be successful, I think I need a, a fair bit of support from PGSM. Uh, what do you call? Yeah, PGSM. Mm. Case studies. Uh, at least we can show some case studies that are outstanding. Uh, whether it's uh, your idea of forming maybe a PGSM ASEAN, PGSM Federation. You know, uh, I don't know whether there are PGSM in Brunei, in uh, different countries. Sorry, uh, I'm not sure about that. But in yeah. Malaysia, we are. I think we are the only one. In yeah, Malaysia. Uh, maybe Indonesia have, and and maybe I posted maybe, yeah. two two videos there just now uh, because uh, speak common language, and they are very very active in uh, now STEM mm. in Indonesia massively. And one group have 10,000 members Ooh. in the uh, AI. And they, they aim at AI now because AI will need STEM and IoT. So they aim at the ultimate. And so if they have already similar type of PGSM, then you've got two already. And uh, I'm sure there's always teachers association, but within that, they can form a subgroup of STEM specialist teachers so that we can um, even link it back to Australia. You know, we have a lot of uh, interest in STEM. Uh, it's a matter of identifying teachers, professors who are interested to support this. So uh, I think it can be done. I'm sure they are keen. They are just looking for uh, ideas. What 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 is your request to them? You know, to support uh, to to buy a hundred kits or whatever for 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 competition for for some selected uh, schools, and from there you can keep increasing it. And, and together with 
KLESF maybe approach Microsoft Malaysia and, and showing them that uh, we want to make every house a smart home so that these, these, uh, these, these students uh, using the Windows or, 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 or the operating system will be able to um, you know, use it for, for good things uh, rather than playing video games. Remember, we started uh, at the beginning of this, uh, the AI drug addiction, ADA, and then we use uh, AI STEM addiction, ASA. So even in Cameroon now, they don't understand what it means by ADA, ASA, SUDA, but they're already practicing it. You know, like George, he, he, he knows what is AI drug addiction. He doesn't know the meaning that is, it means have, right, ADA. And then uh, ASA is hope, I understand, AI STEM addiction. And uh, he just needs uh, other asa and making every house a smart home. I think if we start focusing on, on things like that and present it to KLESF, I have very high confidence that they will support. For them, yeah. uh, they, they, they give you one, they get 100 back because of the power of this uh, awareness. Sorry, George, you got, you got a question. Um, so what is the meaning of ASA? ASA? ASA in Bahasa, uh, Jegu, what, what is the meaning of ASA? In Malay language? Ada sudah. <laughs> uh, ASA is that hope, huh? one of the meaning is called hope, isn't it? Mm. So, George, I think it's hope. If you, you can uh, Google it. In the Wikipedia, okay. you see ASA, one of the meaning is hope. So ADA means have. Don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. Hope, ASA. So ADA yeah. ASA means have hope. So all your houses in Cameroon will be called ADA ASA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. in Malaysia, the they call it ADA ASA SUDA with the, the word SUDA at the back. <laughs> Dr. Peng, I wanted to show you one of the professors in the University of Polytechnic. Okay, so, so, so hello, nice to meet you. We hello. are amongst uh, a lot of teachers here in the, in the Malaysia in the, in the Zoom webinar workshop on this uh, STEM project, Internet of Things. Wow, wow. So, you know, nice. yeah, uh, nice to meet you, first time we meet. And, and you are from, <laughs> from uh, Polytechnic. Yes, yes, yes. In Yaoundé, in the capital. Yaoundé, yes. Yeah, so, so we would like to uh, get this collaboration going with your Polytechnic. And George is a very fine student, 13-year-old boy, and I, I'm sure you love him to bits. <laughs> I'm sure you love him to bits. And so he could, George could be our ambassador now for, for the STEM Teacher Association in Malaysia. <laughs> So Josh will become a poster boy of the world. Surely, surely, surely. Yeah. So, okay. so after so, this, after, so, this uh, after this, I will send my credentials to you so that you can include me on the meetings. Yes, lovely, lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, send me your give, give Josh or, or uh, Josh will give you my uh, WhatsApp. We can correspond from there for sure. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So over there, uh, George has uh, opened many doors. So he can open door on behalf of PGSM. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, KLESF uh, or, or IEM Institution of Engineer Malaysia would love to have uh, together with PGSM teachers to listen to your story. Now, how we, we create network with uh, students from uh, Cameroon. And uh, he has uh, obviously presented it to Google USA manager, who is actually um, uh, attended. She was the keynote of this uh, Woman in Technology conference just last Saturday, a week ago. So as I said, we only know George uh, two weeks ago. So uh, teachers uh, who has uh, 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 students like George or any students at all, let's con connect them together. So we okay. are very, 
Very lucky so, to, thank to, you to Dr. Peng and Ms. Tomairo. Uh, so, thank you, Mr. Tagar. Is you want to say anything before we wrap up for, to, for today's session? Uh, is there any more questions from the audience or anyone? Uh, if there is no question, uh, I think uh, we should thank uh, from Mayro for the uh, lovely presentation and uh, his precious time uh, that he spent with us. And it was uh, indeed a pleasure to have you to, uh, have you with us today. Thank okay, you. So I much. think with that, uh, uh, with that, uh, we can conclude uh, the webinar for today. Uh, for your kind, kind information, we have the next session on the 30th August with the information voice button. Okay, thank from uh, for the next uh, Friday's uh, topic. Okay, thank oh. you all for attending. I think we thank really you. hope you have uh, learned and enjoyed this presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof and uh, Mr. Peng. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Yeah, so <laughs> George will become a friend of Malaysia now. Teachers yeah, Association and, and the professor there too. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. So good. Okay. Amazing. We'll see you, see you nice next week. You and then next week, we're going to have buttons where you can create your own voice. So you'll be able to create your own web pages with your voice. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, maybe we can have a quick, uh, what do you call? Can we take a quick picture? Yeah. Yeah. Take a group picture to go. Yeah, it would be nice if we can uh, have a picture with uh, what do you call? Or all, okay, or all. Yeah, a gallery so that you can keep uh, as a record for all your uh, all your other teachers.